like a shepherd in our lives and we need to listen to hear his voice and we pray to him that to listen to us when we call on to him 545 say like a shepherd Lord, plant my feet on high 
We be silent, be silent. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear, kind, and loving Father, we are so grateful that you have gathered us today, the Holy Sabbath. We pray that, Lord, you be with us. Bless us with the blessings of the Holy Sabbath, and bless each and every one who have entered in this temple. Father, we also pray for the others who are not feeling well, Bless them, and as we get out of this house, which is called after your name, it is our prayer that we may experience being with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we we'll read the affirmation of our, of our faith. It's projected up there. I'll read the first, and then we can read the second and the third together. Nature of humanity. Man and, and woman were made in the image of God with individuality, the power, and freedom to think and to do. Though created free beings, each is indivisible unity of body, mind, and spirit dependent upon God for life and breath and all else. Together, when our first parents disobeyed God, they denied their dependence upon him and fell from their high position. The image of God in them was marred, and they became subject to death. Their descendants share the fallen nature and its consequences. They are born with weaknesses and tendencies to evil, but God in Christ reconciled the world to himself by his spirit, the souls impenitent mortals, the image of their maker, Created for the glory of God, they are called to love him and one another and to care for their environment. Amen. Let's remain standing for opening hymn 321 by Jesus I Love Thee. Bye. 
and happy Sabbath. I'm happy to be here. And I know you guys are happy to be here. Yes. I'm excited because I have a new special guest with us. And those are two guests. And one of them is a really young person. I've known her for so, many, so long. When my son was young, they grew up together. Her name is Jane Njoki. Jane, you want to say hi to us? I can give her a mic too. She's really special because, yeah, go ahead, Jane. Hi, my name is Joki, and I'm happy to be here. Amen. 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 Yes, good job. Thank you. So I've known jo Joki for a long time. I've known her parents. They're very loving parents. They like, they're Christians. And uh, Joki was having fun in our class this morning. Right, Jeff, Joki? Yes. So it's nice to have uh, a young person join us. Uh, anybody else who is and thank you I see we have two new guests here Samson Basweti and Beatrice Basweti from Nairobi Kenya Amen. you want to say hi to us happy Sabbath church happy Sabbath Yes, my name's uh, Samson from Nairobi, Kenya. Basweti, mm -hmm. that's my father's name. Uh, we fellowship at uh, Calvary Church called Calvary Gardens mm -hmm. uh, near Thika Road, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. 
that's where we come from and uh, we are happy to be here Amen. we are just visitors Amen. going back in the next few days Amen. god bless you this is my wife let her, let her greet you happy sabbath Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, my name is Beatrice Basweti. Um, um, I, we, as I said, we come from California, SDA. Um, we have been here for the last, like, two weeks. Last week, we were in a church called, um, I don't know whether it's all nations, the same as this one, but it is in Texas. Uh, so today we are here. Next Sabbath will be in another state, in another Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And the next week will be, the other week will be in Kenya. So we are asking for greetings to take back to Kenya. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We're glad to have you here, me, uh, Basweti family. May you have uh, safe travels. Uh, any other visitor? I see new faces. Um, so feel free to say hi to us. It looks like we are all, okay, one more, thank you. Hi, my name is Yuri, and I'm new here. This is my first time. I came from uh, Spanaway. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We have another young person there. First time here from Spanaway. Yeah. Amen. Oh, my name is Mark. Yeah, we're, from, uh, we're members of Arbor City. Arbor City, okay. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, Arbor City Seventh Day Adventist Church. Okay. So Good. we're just we're visiting. Just We've been visiting. here before, uh, okay. but yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank nice you for welcoming us. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. The Bible says, it is better one day in the house of God than a thousand days elsewhere. So I believe that we're in the right place today because there is no other good place like this place, near this place. So this must be the right place. And may God bless our worship uh, today. So a few announcements for us. Uh, announcement, uh, announcement number one, which is very, very important, exciting, is we have in baptism next Sabbath. Two people will be baptized. That is, amen. <laughs> that is, uh, Emily and Martin will be baptized next Sabbath. So we're looking forward. So if you wish to be baptized as well, please let us know. So announcement number two, our pastor, Daniel Bennett, who is not here today, he pastors two churches, uh, Highline and, and All Nations. He's going to be ordained on uh, April 27. So he's inviting us, the ordination will be at, all, uh, at Highline Church. And I think more information will be coming up, but you can save that date. He's gonna be ordained on that day. Uh, another announcement is, uh, there'll be a board meeting tomorrow in the morning, Sunday, April 14th. So please, if you're a board member, you're asked to attend the meeting. Also, I've been requested to read the nominating committee members. So the following members will serve in the nominating committee. Bruno Antoni, Sylvia Oganga, Isaac Kamau, Yukabet Migonda, Dave Nyauchi, Moses Wawelo, and Anthony Mushiri. I think that's the final reading. If you have any issues with these persons, you can let us know. Uh, Pathfinders are still planning to go to the International Campo League. If you're going there, we've been requesting that you pay $600. So if you, not, you have not been able to pay that, please plan on paying that. And there will be a, a short meeting today at 4 p.m., question and answers. If you're going to the company, let us meet at 4 p.m., maybe here in the sanctuary, for a very short meeting, question and answers. Another uh, uh, unfortunate news, we have uh, one of our former members, Mr. Jose Karebu. He's, not, he's unwell, he's recovering in, at Life Care Centers of America, so if you want to pay a visit, I uh, hear the family has okayed that you can visit him there. So uh, his name is Kosea Karebu. He used to be a member here. Hmm? Life Care Center of uh, Federal Way. It's right here in Federal Way. Uh, 
I believe those are the only uh, announcements that I have. We have Bible studies as usual in the corner there. We have potluck as usual. And, uh, and may God continue to bless our worship today. Thank Amen. you. And I want my wife, I'm happy now. <laughs> so the, ne uh, the next thing is uh, children's stories now. Uh, the children will you know, circulate and will collect some money. It is exciting to have these children uh, story this morning. Let's go to money. Kids, do you have an exciting week? Anybody has an exciting week? Z Shell, you did? There was something that was so exciting that was in the news. The sun was, what is it? A solar eclipse. Solar yeah, that thing. Yeah. Did you guys watch it on TV? Yeah. yeah, it was so fun. They didn't even come over here. Yeah, I know it was somewhere in Texas and other places like that. So it was fun. I was able to watch it too. But guess what? There's something else exciting that, w that is coming. Say again. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And when he comes, it will be more than the solar eclipse. It will be fun. So I have a story for you guys. And it's a story about a firstborn. Anybody who is a firstborn here? Oh, we have two. Oh, okay. We have four firstborns here. So that is exciting. So please remember this story. It's called the Passover. Anybody know what, it, what that means? The Passover. Have you ever passed, passed somewhere and over to the other side? It is like when you have this house 
and then you pass over this house. Anybody want to do that for me? I want somebody to pass over the house. Yes, you did it. Pass over. So we're going to learn about something that happened in the Bible whereby the angel was passing over houses that was in, that was in Israel. You know the story? So let us read the Bible so that you, may, you guys may think I'm, not, I'm making up the story. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter, chapter 12, verse 13, it says, When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the prey will, shall not be on you to destroy you when I, when I strike the land of Egypt. So this is God saying, and he's saying, I'm going to send angels. But when they, when they see blood on your house, they are going to pass your house. So there is a story of a, of a boy. Can we give him a name? What one do you want to go with? Daniel. Daniel. So he chose Daniel. So Daniel was about five years old. Anybody who is five? Okay. Five. He's five. So Daniel was living in Egypt that time. His family was there. They were not supposed to be there, but they were there. But God was saying, it is time for you to leave Egypt. But this is, gonna, is, this is what is going to happen because Pharaoh, the king, is refusing for you guys to leave. I'm going to destroy or to kill every firstborn, even, even an animal. If it's a firstborn, it was supposed to be killed. But then he says, if you put blood, if you kill this lamb and put blood on the doorposts of your house, I'm going to pass over your house. So Daniel's family used to be very rich, and his father used to have servants, people working for him. And these people were very good people, good servants. They were working for, the, for these men. So when the, during the, that night of the Passover, Daniel's dad told the servants, please make sure you apply blood on the doorpost. Why? So that the angel of death will pass over our house. And Daniel was the firstborn. If there was no blood, he's going to be, to be killed, right? That's a sad thing. So Daniel, imagine that night. What happened to Daniel? He could not be able to fall asleep. He kept asking his dad, 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 are you sure the servants put blood on the door, on the doorpost? And his dad was saying, yes, my son, we have a faithful servant. I know he did it. I know he has painted the doorpost with the blood. So he told Daniel to go to sleep. And then when Daniel went to sleep, he could not be able to sleep. He started counting all the animals that Noah took to the, to the ark, lion, Cheetah, monkey, what else? Turtle. Squirrel. Uh, African pirates? Chicken. Moose. <laughs> Elephant. Cow. Giraffe. Jeep. Ancient moose. A monkey. monkey. So Daniel was able to, he, he was trying to fall asleep. What are the animals? Like, like ducks. Like ducks, yeah. Ducks were put in the ark too. So, but Daniel, still, he could not fall asleep. He counted all the animals, but he still could not sleep. He still was scared that there was no blood in the house that the angel of death will come. And because he's the firstborn, he's going to be killed. So he wakes up and goes to his father and says, Father, are you sure we have blood patent on our doors? And his dad says, my son, please go to sleep, rest. I know my servants, they have done the job. You go and sleep. So he went back to bed again, Daniel. But Daniel was unable to sleep again. So he wakes up in a dream and he sees what? He sees the angel of death by their door waiting. Can you see the angel waiting at the door? And Daniel woke up and he's so terrified. He's shaking. He goes to dad. He says, dad, this time I want to go outside and make sure that our door is covered with blood. 
And his dad says, you know who? I'm not going to keep worrying about you. He took Daniel in his arms and he went to the door and opened the door. Guess what he saw? There was no blood. It was right there in the basin. The servant forgot to put the blood. He was so busy putting blood on all the other houses, but he forgot to put the blood on, the, on their own house. So Daniel's father put Daniel down, and he knelt down, and he took the blood, and he began to paint their door. It was almost midnight, time for the angel to come. So he painted the door, and as soon as he did that, Daniel was so excited and, and relaxed, and you know, he made a deep breath, like, wow. You know, it's just, just, just we escaped that. And you know what happened? Daniel fell asleep immediately. And his dad took him to the house and put him in his bed. And Daniel, they say he slept. And the angel of death came and he passed over their house. And Daniel was saved because they were able to follow the instructions that day about what the, what the angel had said. So you know, Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. And his blood covers us. And we're supposed to believe in him. It's a simple thing, but it works. Every time your parents pray for you guys, they are covering you with the blood of Jesus so that the angel of death will pass over. Would you like to be covered by his blood so that the angel of death will pass over? Yes. So let us pray so that we can be covered, okay? Just remember the story of the Passover. And always try to cover your, yourself by praying to Jesus. Jesus loves us, and he doesn't want us, any one of us to die. Anyone know John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, and whoever believes in him will not perish and have everlasting life. What? Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes, you pray. That whoever believes in him shall not perish. Guys, it is a simple thing, but it works. God's goal is for us not to perish, okay? So he loves us. Let us pray. And uh, what's his name? Liam. Liam, come here. Come pray. I want you to pray, yes. Come. So let us, uh, Liam, pray for us. Thank you, God, for this time. You've heard my toys. We have a good day from you. Amen. Amen. Father God in heaven, we pray that you may cover these children with your blood. The destruction will not come near them. May you protect them in their childhood as they, as they continue to grow so that they can also experience you in a new way. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us this morning. In Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Happy Sabbath, Church. My name is Naomi, and today I'll be doing Health Nugget. How many of you guys like to take a nap? Raise your hand. <laughs> I know I do. I love napping, whether that be after a long day of work, school, or just a nice like afternoon nap. So today I'm going to talk about health benefits, the do's and don'ts of napping, and why napping is good for you. First off, I'm going to talk about the benefits of napping. Napping offers various benefits for our health, and these things include relaxation, reduced fatigue, increased alertness, improved mood, and improved performance, including quicker reaction time and better memory. Although napping is good for us, there could be some bad things about it too. First off, napping isn't for everyone. 
Some people simply can't sleep during the day or have trouble sleeping in places other than their own beds, which napping sometimes requires. Napping can also have negative effects. Um, first one is sleep uh, in, in retia. You can feel groggy and disoriented after taking a nap. And this could really like ruin the flow of your day or it can be hard to get up after taking a nap. Another thing is nighttime sleep problems. Short naps generally don't affect nighttime sleep quality for most people, but if you experience insomnia or poor sleep quality at night, napping might worsen because of these problems. Long or frequent naps might mess up your sleep schedule at night. Um, now I'm gonna talk about when you should consider to take a nap. You might consider taking a nap if you experience new fatigue or unexpected sleepiness, are about, to, are about to experience sleep loss, for example, due to a long work shift or hard days. And another one is if you want to do, if you want to make napping part of your daily routine. Um, so with that, what is the best way to take a nap? To get the most out of a nap, here are some tips. Keep your nap short. Aim for a nap that's only 10 to 20 minutes. The, uh, the longer nap is more likely to make you feel groggy afterward. However, young adults might be able to tolerate um, longer naps. Take naps in the early afternoon. Napping after 3 p.m. can interfere with your nighttime sleep. Individual factors such as your need for sleep, your sleeping schedule, and your age, and the medication you use can also play a role in determining um, your, nap, your nap schedule. And create a restful environment. Nap in a quiet, dark place with a comfortable room temperature and, a few and very few distractions. Lastly, after napping, give yourself time to wake up before resuming activities, particularly ones that take sharp attention. And now I'm going to end off with a verse. Uh, comes from Philippians 4, 7, and it says, Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that you can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds when you live in Jesus Christ. Thank you. It's another time for uh, uh, returning our tithes and offering. As our deacons and uh, deaconesses come forward, I will share a verse, and also as uh, later come forward, and also Siobhan later on, uh, I will share a verse that is in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verses 10. But before that, I wanted to share something that Ellen G. White has said about money. She has said that money has three true, true purposes. Purpose number one, it is to help, uh, help in the gospel work. And number two is to provide for your own needs. And number three is to provide for the needs of other people. So this is a summary of the true purpose of money. To serve the gospel, serve the needs of other people, and also serve the needs of yourself. So may God bless us as we continue to pray. The book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will be no more room enough to receive it. May God bless us as we give. Amen. Amen. Later. Happy Sabbath. <clears throat> My name is Layla, and I'm going to sing a song that is entitled Bow the Knee.
step we take There are times and circumstances Make perfect sense to us As we try to understand each move he makes When the bad grows dim And our questions have no answers Turn to him Bow the knee Trust the heart Thank you so much, Leila, for that piece. Thank you. So we have also uh, Alisa and Siobhan and Ron.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let's all rise up. We give thee by thine all, whatever thou give may be, all that we have in thine alone, our trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Father God, it is true that all belongs to you and it's just something that you have lent to us as we return this money to you may it go forward to do the gospel work may and may blessings follow the money where it goes may you bless your people as they have given because that is a promise that you have promised lord that you're going to bless us abundantly may you even bless us spiritually so that we can be drawn closer and closer to you Thank you, Jesus, for hearing our humble prayer. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We thank God this morning for his mercies upon our, our lives. It is time for us to talk to our God. But before we pray, I want to read a statement from the book Steps to Christ. Um, there's a, a chapter there which talks about the privilege of prayer. When Jesus was upon the earth, he taught his disciples how to pray. Jesus himself prayed. His humanity made prayer a necessity and a privilege. He found comfort and joy in communion with his father. And if the savior of men, the son of God, felt the need to pray, how much more should fearful, sinful mortals feel the necessity of fervent, constant prayer. What a wonder it is that we pray so little. So God is ready and willing to hear the sincere prayer and the amplest of his children. May God help us that we may be able to understand all to make prayer a necessity and a privilege i want to request those who are able to kneel with me so that meal so that we be able to pray Let us pray. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, creator of heaven and earth, we come before you this your Sabbath morning with a lot of thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, we have come as we are. 
We have come as children. We have come as youths. We have come as women. We have come as men of this church. We recognize that we are sinners. We have fallen short of your glory. Lord, we want to pray that please may you forgive us. Have mercy upon us, Lord. We have come because we didn't have anywhere to go. We know you had the solutions to our problems, our shortcomings in this world and our challenges, Lord. We have come to you, Lord, this morning. We want to thank you for who you are in our lives. We want to thank you for the privilege that you've given us to be called your sons and your daughters. My father, you redeemed us by your death on the cross. We belong to you, Lord, by creation and by redemption. We want to thank you for all that you have done to us. This morning, Lord, your children have come to, to this house which is called by your name, that you may speak to us. Lord, may you speak to us through your servant. Elder Joffrey has his hands to speak to your children. We want to pray that you may use him mightily to bring of the bread that is picked from heaven this morning. We want to pray, Lord, that you may touch us, Lord, that we may hear the words that you want to speak to us. Open our inner understanding, Lord, that we may hear your word. We want among, among us, Lord, I know that we have challenges. We have people who are sick. <laughs> But we pray against anything that the devil has put in your children so that they may not hear your word. Help us, Lord, let your whole spirit take over and let your will be done in our lives. For this we pray in Jesus' name. My name is Seth, and I'm doing scripture reading. Uh, please open your Bibles. At that time, the 
the scripture reading is coming from Daniel chapter 12, 1 to 3. At that time, Michelle, Michael shall, shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting con contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the fir firmament, firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Amen, 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 church. Yeah, you know, we should be thankful when we see our kids serving here, right? Yeah, it's amazing. That shows our church has a future. Let me, let me tell you something. Last week, I went to a church, and uh, some people were asking me if I went to the ladies. I did not go with the ladies, so <laughs> don't get confused about that. I, wasn't, I didn't go with the ladies. But I went to a church, and, you know, it's sad that there was only one kid in that church, one little boy who was in that church. And then when they saw my two boys, they were so excited. So we should be thankful that we can be able to sit here, watch our kids, you know, serve God. All we can do is pray for them so that as they grow up, God may help them to continue serving him even when they grow older. Thank you so much for the kids. Thank you to the kids who sang, Robert's family. And now it's choir time to sing, and they will be singing a song, uh, which is a combination of uh, Swahili and English. So if you miss the Swahili part, you'll get the English part, right? So it's a, it's a mixed grill, it's a kind of sort of a, of a song. And uh, it talks about the greatness of our God. And we are amazed of how great things that our God can do. Uh, even if I walk in the, any, any place, he, he will always be. How great thou art. That's the song that we'll be singing. We will be blessed as we listen to this song.
Happy Sabbath. I'm excited here. Oh, sorry for that. There's an announcement that I wanted to make that I kind of forgot to do that. Sorry for that. We have a special guest that is coming to here next Sabbath. She was here before. Her name is Donna Carey. She's an expert on uh, drug abuse and you know, all that stuff. So she's coming back next Sabbath. She'll be speaking in the morning to all of us. And then in the afternoon, she'll be speaking to our young people. So if you know other young people out there who can benefit, uh, it, it's going to be a good time for our young people. So please uh, just take note. Also, the deacons and the deaconesses have been asked to stay behind for a short meeting uh, after the service. So uh, here I have uh, Mr. Geoffrey Gige. He's an evangelist coming to us all the way from Kenya. He is formerly of Washington and also Arizona. He also happens to be uh, our best couple in our wedding. He's the one who signed the certificate. So we kind of regard him uh, specially for that. And uh, I've known Geoffrey for over 20 years. He loves the Bible. He has a special memory. You know, he's been, uh, he's been, he is blind, like you can see, but God has been able to bless him with an incredible memory, and especially of the Bible. He loves uh, Bible prophecy. He also loves uh, the, the uh, health message. So it is always a blessed time to be able to interact uh, with, with Geoffrey. He likes, he likes people, so don't be afraid to say hi to him. And uh, when he is in Kenya right now, he's been here for a short time. His, uh, his daughter had a wedding, but he's, he's going, he's, he's, he'll be going back in a few weeks maybe from now. But when, when in Kenya, he's doing God's work. He's still doing the work of evangelism. And right now, he's trying to evangelize to alcoholics. We have a lot of people who, have been, uh, uh, who are alcoholics in Kenya. So Geoffrey is reaching out to that particular group of people, uh, trying to show them how they can be sober and how can they can live for Jesus. And uh, Geoffrey has a registered ministry, registered here in the U.S. by the name uh, Passing the Light Ministry. If you can Google that, it, you can be able to go to his website. And if you want to support him in any way, you can also uh, see me or, uh, or, or talk to Geoffrey yourself. So uh, without taking much time. I want to pray with Geoffrey. And Geoffrey, these people are eager to hear the word of God as God has been able to impress you. So let us pray. Uh, Father God in heaven, we praise you for giving us an opportunity to be able to hear again from you. May you have your own way, your own best way with Geoffrey as he speaks for your glory and for our own blessings. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Maranatha. Amen. Maranatha. Amen. Okay, this time round, I want to, if I say Maranatha, I'm telling you that Jesus is coming, so I want you to say amen. Okay? All right, Maranatha. Amen. I didn't hear you. Maranatha. Maranatha. Oh, that sound good. I'm so delighted to be here in All Nation Church, and I'm so grateful to be with you in this church. I know many. Uh, I, I know many people here. I have seen. And I have met them, and today God have decided to use me to talk to you. And our topic today is uh, 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 the, the, the end of the earth probation. So we're going to be looking at the Bible and see how, it's a, how God will continue talking of the, the, the talking with us. So uh, the title of my sermon is The Cross of Earth Probation. 
And uh, we're going to be dwelling very much on the book of Daniel, chapter number 11. And uh, in the book of Daniel, chapter number 11, it's very much uh, uh, connected with Daniel, chapter number, number 10, chapter number 9, and chapter number 12. And God is gonna, God going to talk to us through the book of Daniel, chapter number 11, and especially we're going to be uh, dwelling very much on the, on the verse number 45. Uh, in the book of Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 45, it is talking about a system which will plant a tabernacle between the seas and the holy mountain. And after this system doing that, it will come to its own end. So we're going to uh, uh, see what God is having for us and the history he is having for us in this verse, and especially where are we today. So brothers and sisters, it's the high time we need uh, to hear God talking to us. And I believe uh, we will see what the Lord wants to tell you and to warn us. Uh, the Bible says in the book of uh, Amos 3, verses number 7, it is saying, Surely God will not do anything before he reveal it to his uh, servant, the prophet. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, again, that means when the Lord wanted to do something prophetically, he had to reveal it to his fellow servant, the prophet. And in the book of Daniel, chapter number uh, 11, there is a history and things which are taking place today, and we're going to see how these things are taking place. Uh, you, you can uh, also, uh, and I, I would like also you guys to understand that in Daniel 10 and Daniel 11 and Daniel 12, they are talking the same thing, and also they are talking about prophecy, and also in these chapters, they are talking literally, not now, symbols. You know, in Daniel chapter number 2, Daniel chapter number 7, Daniel chapter number 8, you know all about the lions, all about the ritual horn, all about the he goats, all those are there. But now in Daniel chapter number 10, Daniel chapter number 11, and Daniel chapter number 12, Daniel was, uh, God revealed to Daniel these things literally, how they're going to take place in our planet. And more so, I, I want to add you that in the book of Daniel chapter number 12, it is, con it is a continuation of the word of the angel which he, which he told Daniel, and Daniel didn't understood, but now in Daniel chapter number 12, he wanted to continue with that discussion. So brothers and sisters, the book or the final verse of the book of Daniel chapter number 12, number chapter number 45 it is giving us the end of the history and god have a, a good good wonderful history for us there in the book of uh, uh, in, the, in the bible before the cross the bible and the spirit the prophecy was talking very much 
pointing to Israel as, uh, a, a, as the key verse. But after the cross, the prophecy has a, a special meaning because it doesn't point now the Israel, it pointed the whole world rather than pointing to these people, God of, uh, to these people of Israel. And why is it doing this? Because from the, from, from the year 35, 34 AD, the Israel themselves rejected Jesus Christ as their personal savior and now he is talking about the world wide. Many people when they study the, uh, the prophetic uh, message, they always try to look at the Middle East and they also wait to see many things happening in Israel. But from the cro uh, before the cross that was, but now it is worldwide. People are, are always every time confused when they keep on looking to the literal land of Israel to fulfill the prophecy. This, the prophecy from 34 AD, now is pointing to the whole world, not the land of Israel. Uh, I, I want also that uh, to, to ask God to help us so that we may be not confused the way the world is confused and we need to know that uh, today God is talking about the, about the, Bab the Babylon which is not literally Babylon, but it is a spiritual Babylon. In the book of Daniel, you keep on reading about the king of the south and the king of the north. And most, most of the time, we think about the, king, the, the kingdom of Egypt and the kingdom of Syria or Babylon. But now we are talking about spiritual Babylon. Uh, so when we talk about the spiritual Babylon, we also need to understand very clearly that the king of the north is the, 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 the spiritual Babylon which is working today. In those, in those uh, early days, we were talking about uh, Babylon as the Babylonian, uh, uh, the king of the north as Babylon, but today is the spiritual Babylon. In the book of now, Daniel chapter number 45, he is saying that this king's or spiritual Babylon is gonna be building the tent, the temple between the sea and the, and the holy mountain. What is this? What is this? We need to understand this. In the book of, uh, uh, of Revelation, it is giving us a revelation to know what, it, what are the seas, and also we need to know the holy mountain. What are, who are these holy mountain? See in the book of Revelation, chapter number 17, verses number 15, it is giving us a clue that whenever the prophecy talk about sea, it talks about people, nations, tri tribe, countries, and all these other, uh, uh, the whole world, nation and tribes and languages. So on the other side, when we see the holy mountain, it is talking about God's own people in this world. So this uh, spiritual Babylon, it will be building its own temple or its own tent between, the God, between God's people and also the other people worldwide. That means this spiritual Babylon 
we will also deny God people to take the message to the entire world, which is now, we, uh, which is uh, 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 the, the entire world who have not accepted Christ. That means there is spiritual Babylon, there is God people, and there is the entire world which need to be given the everlasting message. Remember, Jesus Christ said that before the end come, or before he come in his second coming down here, the message of the everlasting gospel have to be taken to the entire world. And that means uh, the holy mountain means the people of God, those people who have the truth, and they live according to every word that uh, come out of the mouth of God. And remember Jesus also said that in the last days, people will know the truth, and the truth gonna send, gonna, gonna, gonna set them free. Hallelujah. Amen. So whenever these God people who live according to the truth of the Bible are trying to tell other people in this world about this truth, this spiritual Babylon is also denying them an opportunity to make that happen. That's why you see it is building the, the, or planting the, 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 the temple between God's people and the, 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 the people of this world. And you know, mountain, Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, illustrated sometimes, when you see a mountain, it will signify that you see the truth in Jesus Christ. It, is, it look like a mighty mountain, and you may not like it, and if you fight it or reject it or want to ride to get rid of it, you can, you can be, uh, try to do that, but finally it will stand like a mighty mountain and you're going to smash yourself uh, in pieces. But in the book of Luke chapter number, number 20, Verses number 18, Jesus is also talking about the rock. And he says, this rock here, whoever will follow on this rock will be broken. But if you don't fall on this rock, then the rock going to fall on you and it will smash you to powder. Well, so I, I, I think that uh, make, uh, make a clear significance between now what I'm talking here about the mountain as people of God. Jesus also illustrated it by that verse. Luke 20, verse number 18. Jesus now here, he is explaining very explaining our salvation in a very, very, very significant way, saying that if you follow to that lock, that means uh, uh, this rock, you need to, uh, to know who is this rock, and this rock is Jesus Christ. He talked about falling on this rock. If Jesus Christ in those days he tried to uh, identify himself by that lock and, and uh, the word of God in the Bible. So that, that is why the Bible called him the word of God. And uh, also, many people on this planet don't, do not want to follow on this rock. And if you don't follow on the lock when you are still here on this planet Earth, remember, prophetically, the lock gonna fall on you and it will smash you, grinding you into 
powder. This who are these who are these gonna be, gonna gonna be fold? Who the, the, this rock gonna fall to those people who are rejecting every effort that Christ is making to get them surrender to Him and cooperate with Him for their own salvation. The king now, this is special Babylon, have rejected that, and now he is denying and defying the defying Christ. He have rejected Christ, and he is trying to make other people to defile Jesus Christ, not knowing that the Lord will also come. Jesus Christ will also come because the rock signify or rocks is Jesus. He will come and he will follow to all those who have rejected him and uh, they will be grinded into powder. The final, that, that means finally the rock going to fall on those people who will reject him. In the book of Daniel, chapter number 11, verses number 44, it says that the special Babylon will be so annoyed because of the tiding which will come from east, which means the people of God in this planet, they will try as they are led by the Holy Spirit to rift up higher and higher Christ Jesus who will give the entire world the everlasting gospel. And this everlasting gospel gonna be changing people from how they are living in this world now rejecting God and they will start to love their Lord. And the spiritual Babylon will be so much annoyed that in the verse number 44, it is say, after, after this, this, uh, after this uh, spiritual Babylon here understand what is going on the planet Earth, it will be very angry and it will now start to wear out God people. So, because, because the people of God will be trying to warn the people of this planet what this spiritual Babylon is trying to do on this planet, and they will also be sounding a very, very, very mighty message telling people to get out of this spiritual Babylon. So spiritual Babylon gonna be angry and gonna be annoyed and now it will come against God, people. The prophetic, uh, the, uh, in prophecy, this spiritual Babylon have to do what it, it, it is gonna do because it is now gonna, gonna plant the, his, tamp, his tabernacle between God's people, that is the mountain, and the people that is the seas. Are you understanding this now? You know, blind people sometimes are worried. Are you here? <laughs> oh, you know we hear by seeing, but we, we see by hearing. So if I talk to you and you don't talk, I may think you have been so angry and you went away. <laughs> Praise God, are you here? Okay, are you understanding now a little bit? Yes. yes, because this spiritual Babylon have planted his own tent between God people that, that is trying to reject the truth to be taken to the entire world. And now it will be so even furious that it will come against God people. But remember the promise of the Lord that I'm going to be with you even to the end. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So this, 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 this is why this wicked power 
is standing between the nation of this, plan, this planet Earth and God people who are trying to tell the world that Christ is coming and they need to come out of this spiritual Babylon. In the book of Daniel now, uh, I think you are now understanding, coming to understand the book of Daniel chapter number 11 verses number 45, which is saying that, uh, that he, he shall plant, his plan, he shall, it says, Exactly. Remember, the Lord is giving us a revelation that even if he is trying to stop God people to preach the message that can save the people, try and after knowing what God is doing through his people, he will try to wipe out the people of God, and this is why he will make rules and and regulation of the in the in this world and those who people people who will not follow his own rules he will try to kill them but the lord says at this particular time he have done that area in the uh, in the prophetically uh, especially from the year 538 the bible says this this uh, wicked wicked uh, spiritual Babylon wiped out God people and more than 50, 50 million people were killed by this wicked system. And now in the last days, remember we are talking about the end of the earth probation. Before the world is, uh, before Christ come, the end of the probation is that when this king, when this system will stand to fight God people, it is a very wonderful promise that the Lord is promising us here that he will come to his end. He will not know that he's going to come to his end, but in verse number 45, he says it, he will come to his end. The Lord will not allow him to do what he did in dark ages. The Lord will come and he will come to his own end, this Babylonian or spiritual Babylon. That's good news, isn't it? Yeah, because, because uh, the Lord is trying to encourage us to know what will happen in the latter or in the last days before the Lord Christ Jesus is coming here. So this kingdom or this spiritual Babylon is coming to his end. This is a glorious promise that the Lord has promised. In 1260 year, in the, in the 1260 years prophecy, God people were on his hand and he killed him. But in the final trouble of this world, the Lord has, has revealed through his prophet that he will not be around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers, I also want to, uh, you, you to understand. Whenever the world is so uh, intense, the Lord do something. In the book of Revelation, chapter number 12, verses number 1, what does it say? Somebody read, my brother, read there. No, 12, Daniel 12, Daniel. Did I say liberation? Oh, sorry. I said, uh, I mean Daniel. Daniel chapter number 12. Okay. The Bible says that in those days, 
when the end will be almost the end of probation, Michael will stand up. And whenever you hear the word Michael, it refers to Christ Jesus, who is the only person who, ha who is look like God. It is the one who is like God. Michael is another name of Jesus Christ. He will stand up and the people of God will be saved. You know, he always stand for God's people. In the book of Acts chapter number, uh, there is another time when Michael stand and you, uh, if you, if you, if you uh, uh, read the Bible, Jesus, whenever he stand up, it is the time that he is fighting the devil. When the devil is so intense, fighting God people here, and Christ up there, when he stand up, the battle is won. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, the, the battle is always won when the Lord Jesus Christ, Michael, who stand, or, who stand for his people on this planet, he, he, uh, when he stand up, the battle is won. He stand when Stefano was uh, being stoned. What does the Bible say about that? Acts chapter number, uh, number 57, 50, Act 7 verse number 56. Acts chapter number 7 verses number 56. Yes, when Stefano was, uh, was stoned, Michael stood up. And Stefano revealed to his uh, enemy, I see Jesus standing up in heaven. That is Act chapter, uh, 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 Act chapter number seven. This time he was not sitting down. In AD 30, 34, when he stood up, the probation of Israel ended. Although now they can be saved as individually, but to be saved as nation, their probation came to the end. So when, he, when this time he will stand up, Michael, the probation of the world will come to the end. Now, at this time, everybody on this planet will have made up their mind and they will made up their decision either to be on Christ Jesus, uh, Christ Jesus, or keeping all his commandment, or being on the other side, rebelling against him. So it is the high time we need to make up our decision to be on God's side. Because when Michael stand up, you will be, the probation will come to the end. And if you will be on the other side, my brother, my sister, it will not happen a miracle for you to come or to go on the other side. This is the time. Hallelujah. This is the time to make up our, my, uh, our mind. Me, I want to be among those people who will be written, who will be, uh, have uh, their name written in the book, and they will be delivered, and they will be given reward. And now, at this, time, at this particular time before the probation come to the end, it is very clear that the devil will deceive many people who profess to be on God's side. They're gonna be deceived. And it is very, very sad if anyone among us can be on the other side being deceived. May God forbid, because we want to be on God's side. 
The time of trouble before Christ Jesus come, the righteous will be, be prof, the righteous will be protect, protected by the holy angel. And the angel will not give security to those who are against God's law. That is why it's very important to help, to ask God to help you to keep God's commandment. Because those who are not keeping the, uh, keeping the Ten Commandment, they will not get that security. But those who are keeping God's commandment, they will get the proper security and perfect security from the devil. Angels cannot protect those who either they are regarding one of the commandments, Jesus is going to be with his people, and the devil will not be able to overcome them. That's good news, isn't it? Yes. Amen? Yes. yes. Now And now, before I end up my sermon, the trouble which is ahead of us, it is terrible than any, ter any, any trouble has happened. And what makes this so dreadful? Because at this, this particular time, the Bible says, before the cross, and before Christ come out from the heavenly temple, the blood of Jesus in those terribles which has passed were mixed up with grace. But now, the end trouble, Jesus will come out of the, of the, of the sanctuary in heaven and he's going to say it is finished. We owe Jesus a lot of uh, love because he loved us so much that his grace always is mixed up whenever, we are, whenever there is trouble or tribulation, he mixes, he allows his blood to be mixed up so that we can be saved. But this time round, there is no work of salvation. When the probation comes to the end, it is the time that Christ will say, whoever is righteous, let him be righteous. Whoever is sinful, let him be sinful. So the trouble will be too much. And now here, my brothers and my sister, the, uh, the book of Daniel, I, I want to go back to Daniel 12 verses number 2. It says, and at that particular time, those people who are sleeping in the dust, many of them, uh, not many, it says, it says, many of those who are sleeping will come, some to everlasting and uh, condemnation, and some to everlasting life. That means even those who died in Christ, that is why it is sometimes when you think about this, it is even uh, very important to think when somebody is almost dying, which death are you dying? Are you sleeping or you are dying? God people do not die. God people sleep. Amen? Amen. Then they will be waken up by Christ to have what he have for them. And now, those who will be alive, the Bible says in verse number three, those who are wise shall shine as the, uh, lead that, my brother, for me. Uh, verse number three. That means those who are doing God's work now, they are wise and they will shine like, like, uh, like the star of firmament. 
And now it is the time you need to shine for Jesus. If you want your name to be up there, you need to prepare yourself down here by uh, working for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I tell you, just before the actual coming of Jesus Christ in the crowd, there will be a, a special resurrection. Those people who will die in this tribulation of the end, and those who also speared Jesus, they will have a very special resurrection to see him come. Amen? Amen. So it is even better to die in Christ rather than to be alive out of Christ. Also those who crucified Jesus and those who will also be persecuting God people. They will be having a very special resurrection to see that the one who they were persecuting his servant is coming. Not now as a lamp of God, but he will be coming as king of kings. Jesus is giving us this hope, and I believe if we keep on loving him, one thing, it will be so terrible to those wicked ones when Christ will be coming, but those who are looking for Jesus, it will be marvelous because they know that they are now coming to the end, and they will not see those people who are trying to force them to, uh, to, to rebel against their Savior, and they will live with the Savior forever and ever. Amen. The evil one will die three times. The other death, and when they see him, they will die, and uh, Finally, in the wreck of fire, they will die. Do you want to die four or three times? Me, I don't want. I want to live and see Jesus come. If I will be, if I will be sleeping, I will wake up to go with him, to live with him forever. And if I will be alive, I will be, I will be changed to, to be able to see him so that I can go with him up there. Biblia, in the book of Daniel 12, verse number, number, number 3, is very, very good. And Daniel was told by the angel that this book will not be understood before the end of those, uh, those uh, prophecy come to their end. This knowledge means not be educated and having a lot of degrees. It is talking about the uh, understanding of this prophecy of Daniel and the other prophecies. And now because the time is running over, I would like to uh, urge you to keep on leading the prophecy so that it can alert you where we are prophetically, where we have come uh, from. Remember, in, in, in the 1260 years, when the prophecy was coming to uh, the end, people in the, uh, of this world, they all were given that wisdom, and they started reading the book of Daniel, and they understood what it meant, and they were very eager to, uh, to, uh, to see the end of these uh, prophetic days. Even in, those, in this time, in the end of time, we need to lead the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation and other prophecies because they have a special meaning for us at these last days. And in the book of Daniel, I really love it so much that uh, 
I, I, I even preach it in, uh, on sermon. Maybe you think I, 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 I could have better come to Bible study, but I love it so much that I know it have a lot of meaning for you and for me. And if we also have a sermon on it, I thought it, uh, the Lord revealed to me that is the message I need to bring to you today to prepare you for the crisis which are coming very soon. So I, it is my prayer that may God continue blessing you to continue learning more about this prophetic of Daniel and Revelation uh, uh, at these last days. I know from the time of Daniel prophecy, even to where we are now, the Lord is trying to make his people uh, to understand these messages so that they can be lady because Jesus Christ is coming very soon. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? May God help us and prepare us and make us ready. And if you want to be, to be made ready by the Holy Spirit, I would urge you to stand and we pray together. Let's pray. Our dear, kind, and loving Father, we are so grateful that you have been with us today. I thank you for making it possible for us to hear your voice as you speak, spoke using me. And I know your Holy Spirit will help us even to understand what you wanted us to understand today. Those people uh, who are also listening to us elsewhere, I pray for them as you bless us here in All Nation Church. Bless them wherever they are and prepare us to be a people ready to meet you when you come. The crisis which are ahead of us, you are not telling us so that we may be afraid, but you are even helping us to be ready and to know you are going to be with us even to the end of the age. Bless us and, and now and continue being with us the last of the holy hours of the Sabbath. Uh, for this we pray, trusting in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Evangelist Geoffrey Ngigi. Uh, as you, we wait for the praise team, I wanted to make an, an announcement that I forgot. We have a, an upcoming wedding for Martin and Emery. And we have a special meeting scheduled for tomorrow, Sunday, 4 p.m. If you've been requested to join them as a committee member, please uh, avail, avail yourself. And if not, I'm also inviting you to attend to that meeting. We'll be posting a Zoom link for that meeting, so you're all invited to attend, and then we can support uh, uh, Emery and uh, Martin.
sheltered from the cold. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Bring them in, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in, bring the world rest to Jesus. Out in the day. Blessings that you have been blessing us throughout. And now as we depart, be with us, guide us, and as we go for lunch, be with us. And uh, also, we also wanted to be with you now and forevermore, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. Let's all get seated. That marks the end of our worship service. Uh, that's the first part. And now we'll be heading out for lunch. Uh, our visitors, please, please, please don't leave. Usually we have a fellowship meal together. It will be up in our fellowship uh, hall. It's right up the stairs. We'll go fellowship together. And then uh, in the afternoon, there will be choir practice at 2 o'clock. And then at, there is uh, other activities going on. But at the moment, the deacons, on the, is it only the deacons or the deacons and deaconesses? The deacons, both of them, both groups, right? So the leader is asking you to meet with him right here. Don't leave the sanctuary. So the deacons or the deaconesses will usher us out and then we'll follow along with the rest of the program in the afternoon. And I'll request it to Sarah to pray for us so that we can go and enjoy the fellowship meal together. Let's have a word of prayer. We want to thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful Sabbath. We want to thank you, Lord, for you have fed us with the spiritual food. Now, dear Father, as we are going to take our physical food, we pray that you may bless us and also help us with the heart, with the heart of compassion for all who might have nothing to share. That's our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we head out, we'll sing the last song that we sing. Bring them in. May we have a great lunch. See you all in the afternoon. Heart is the shepherd's voice I hear.